Hello, I'm uh, going to talk to you today a bit about how I actually built my uh, steampunk PC, but first of all I'm going to give you a little bit of background as to how the Victorians could have possibly had computers, sort of technology that was available at the time that if history had taken a different course they could have built a computer. So there's really three different ways it could have gone. They could have gone down the sort of Babbage route of the sort of mechanical clockwork or steam driven type computers. They could have gone down the route of a water powered computer which has sort of been proven possible more recently and then finally they could have gone down the route of actually building something that today we would see as a computer, so an electronic computer. They did almost have the technology. I'm saying almost because it wasn't quite there. Now, what um, they had in terms of mechanical computers, they had Babbage who had designed his difference engine and started to build it and he had then essentially got bored of that and started work on designs for his analytical engine. Now the analytical engine would very much be what today we would describe as a, com a programmable computer. You could feed in programs on I believe it was punched cards and it had facilities to store the programs in a system of cogs and springs and it was run by a steam engine. Now if you want in your steampunk fiction to take that further you could have that miniaturized using the skills of say watchmaking and that to miniaturize that computer down to something a bit more portable not something that's the size of a small building. So that's one route that you could feasibly go down Another route would be the route of going down a water computer. Now, water computers were actually investigated in the early years of the Soviet Union. They built something called the Water Integrator, which performed quite complex mathematical operations by water running through tubes and um, with reservoirs and tanks to uh, store levels and interestingly this idea appears in let me get the name of the right Terry Pratchett book I th it's one of the Moist Von Lipwig ones I think it's the one where he's in the bank so making money they have a water powered computer and the descriptions of that are very similar to the limited information you can find online on the Soviet's water integrator. So I would suspect that's probably where Pratchett got his idea from. So again, that is feasible. It was built by all reckoning it didn't work particularly well, but it did work. So you could go down the route of water-powered computers in steampunk fiction. The final thing is, is the Victorians were not far off the technology to actually build an electronic computer. They did have, in the early days of crystal radio receivers, a point contact diode, which was basically, I think it's a germanium crystal with a very, very fine wire making a point contact onto it. Now, germanium, I think, is what they used. I think that's the semiconductor they used. And they used them in crystal radios, and they essentially are the same as... They perform the same function as a modern Zener diode. Now, after the Victorian era, it was proven possible that you could build a point contact transistor by the same method. Now, if they had built a point contact transistor, they could have built a transistorized computer, which is something similar to they managed to do with uh, thermonetic valves when they built Colossus. So 
in theory they could have done it it would be incredibly impractical because you would have had these very finely balanced point contact transistors and the slightest vibration would have actually sent them off so what they'd have probably ended up doing is floating the whole thing on a bed of mercury to minimize the uh, vibration which is what they did with lighthouse mechanisms and essentially it was to just would just take all the vibration out so they could have done that it is also possible to build a computer out of relays there's actually a guy online in the states called harry porter who is current that's harry porter not harry potter who is building a computer out of relays now the victorians did have relays they had access to them they were quite expensive but they could have built a relay based computer so that's another route they could have gone down so there's two different electronic routes a possible water route and probably the most likely would be a mechanical route but i do think if they had gone down the mechanical route they would have hit like a a dead end in terms of what was physically possible in terms of computation power and i think the same would really apply to the water route only if they'd gone down the electronic route could we have ended up with sort of similar power levels to we have today and we could have ended up with them earlier now this is obviously all just speculation this is very much aimed at people who want to um, incorporate a computer into steampunk fiction. Now, this video is going to continue, is going to talk to you about how I built my computer, my steampunk computer, and that is going to follow. Now I'm going to talk to you about my actual steampunk PC build. So this is a photograph of what my PC looks like now but what we're going to do is we're going to take a trip back all the way to 2014 when I first started building this. So my starting point was this which is a very boring grey full ATX case which I acquired for free because work were chucking it out. Now, the main advantage of this case, the main reason I chose it, is because the front is almost completely flat, which for the modifications I have planned, and which I will show you shortly, was an enormous advantage. So first of all, I started sort of laying out perhaps how I was going to arrange things, how I was going to lay the case out. So the first thing I did was I decided to move the to move the position where I was going to have the optical drive further down so that I could use the optical drive and card reader in the same part of the case and therefore only have have it all sort of hidden behind that one sort of wooden flap. So first thing I did was I glued in all of the uh, drive bay covers that, for the drives I wasn't going to use glued them in with super glue and then filled all the gaps with car filler smoothed all of that out with uh, multiple different uh, grades of sandpaper then I have sprayed it all with grey primer then I added the little flap so that is a an oak draw front and it is hinged so that it will ultimately can be dropped down to access the drives. Now this is again just looking at some detail. Now drill it all, you notice all the little holes around the edge. They're for doing a riveting effect. Now this is a riveting effect using um, upholstery nails and I would not advise anybody to do this. It is incredibly tedious. It is far easier to use the pearlescent embellishments from the works which is what I have done on every other part of this subsequently. So that is the upholstery nails all fitted in, uh, apart from the bottom edge, which I haven't done at that point. And again, that is all there, just glued in with epoxy. 
and this is now just trying to work out a layout for the top. Now the little chrome handle there is the handle from a broken mini fridge and the turbine adjusting block plate is a genuine antique. I think it's off a diesel train but I'm not entirely sure. I didn't really get any history with it when I bought it. That's just opening out a hole to fit that handle. That's the handle being fitted. And that's the door on again with the uh, elements on it, which are a couple of fuse holders and a miniature knife switch, which I believe is off a doorbell, but I'm not entirely sure. And this is making the backing plate for the start button. So the start button was a doorbell push, but I decided I didn't want the surround for it with the sort of rope effect edging that sort of Georgian style surround I wanted it to look um, more utilitarian so I took a piece of very thin sheet brass and opened out a hole in it using a mini drill and that's the hole just broken out and that's the uh, button fitted and test fitting into the case so we then oh now we move on to the power light so the power lights are an interesting one because they're done to imitate a gas burner so the outer part of that is part of the case the inner sort of rounded off square is an actual gas boiler pilot light assembly then installed behind that is a blue power led and an orange disk activity light so it gives a gas flame flicker effect when the computer's actually running and there you can see it's being tested. It's actually hooked up to a scrap motherboard, which uh, is out of shot to do a test that the power button worked and that the LEDs worked. And that's the case top coated in uh, Halfords Brooklyn's uh, Brooklyn Green, Rover Brooklyn's Green, which is a color I like to use for steampunk. It looks very similar to the shades of green that they used to use to paint large sort of industrial steam engines and that's the case also painted that was just uh, a layer of primer and a layer of paint that was quite straightforward and now we're starting to build up the uh, pipe work on the front so this is just 15 mil copper plumbing fittings glued into place with super glue and um, then uh, I believe there's some little wooden blocks I used to uh, actually mount them onto the case itself. And that's the pipe work on the front completed. I've added the thermocouple from the boiler pilot light. Two pressure gauges on the top which are I believe are airline gauges. So for um, like a workshop sort of air, air system. And then I've added a gas hose, an old gas hose sort of feeding the uh, pilot light assembly on the front. Uh, the side panels of the case are a wood grain effect and that is done using plywood which is just scored with a wood saw not actually cut through so that's a hardwood plywood scored with a saw. You can also see on the bottom the feet on the case which are just uh, cupboard door handles screwed into the holes where the rubber feet would have been. And this is why I wanted to do the, um, the wood effect on the sides. I wanted to add like the brass banding like they used to do on boilers. So the brass bands here are actually um, their tray sliders off a uh, like a restaurant tray system. And that's the side mounted on. Now the grey part on there I was going to use as a sort of chimney arrangement. I ended up scrapping that in the end because I decided it just didn't look right. The, uh, then there's a steam en steam boiler or a stationary engine oiler there fitted again with some bits of 15 mil copper and uh, an old gas tap fitted onto the side as well. Now we move on to the bit of the computer that is going on top which is uh, in my mind this is the actual computer which is driven by the steam engine underneath. So this started out as an egg cupboard. Now, I didn't even know before I started doing this that an egg cupboard was a thing, but I found this little pine cupboard in a charity shop. It was oranger than that. This is after it's already been sanded and um, then stained into a dark oak. The inside just painted white to show up the bits that will be going in shortly. So this is the start of building the inside. So 
you don't have to just use clock parts there is clock parts in this there's also remains of a floppy disk drive and a dat tape drive a broken dat tape drive um, so that's the sort of base of one of the bits which I then started building up more which you can see here so that's got a lot more clock parts in it now and uh, a bit of Meccano and an old uh, machine hours run uh, synchronous indicator and some other sort of numerical indicator governor out of a music box a bit of laptop heatsink now the lighting that's in this at the moment is some very cheap sort of fairy lights which I ended up not using for the light I ended up retrofitting different lighting into it then this is some more bits to go inside this cupboard so that on the left is a an amp meter that uh, I acquired it's got no glass in it and uh, then on the right is what I turned it into so that's taking the mechanism out of that and then fitting a brass protractor to it as a scale then we have this that is also to go on the top so this was a small um, AC um, I believe uh, universal motor which I have decided to repurpose to look a bit like a generator so the pulley is again just a second hand shop fine same as the motor added a big 60 amp fuse behind it and some really heavy duty bits of terminal block connected it all up with this very heavy braided cable which is actually the shielding out of um, some old uh, IDE cables and this is the tower done or done I thought it was done at the time so this would have been around about 2016 that I thought this was done so this is just before I actually put the computer built the computer inside it now for anyone who's interested the computer that's inside this case now which isn't the one that was in it in 2016 is a Windows 10 it's running PC it is a Intel i5 um, running off uh, running off an S uh, Windows running off an SSD with a separate data drive I can give you more specs of the actual computer that's inside if anybody's interested but I don't really think anybody is this is about steampunk not about building computers the, so this is um, bits to go for the peripherals so this is a um, brass blowtorch that I've just sort of mounted onto the top of one of the VESA, VESA mount monitor stands and then this is just working again with some bits of copper pipe and this is making uh, steam hoses so making steam hoses from um, gaffer tape wrapped sticky side out around a pipe then wrap garden wire onto it and then wrap cloth tape so this is some sports injury tape over the top sort of compress it up a bit once you've pulled it off the pipe and you get what looks like a high pressure steam hose and this is just building up bits on the top again that didn't stay quite how it is there you've probably seen in the photos already this uh, it ended up in a brass holder and this is the steam hoses how they were going to connect to the back of the monitors with just a little brass plate and some more plumbing fittings and that's it all connected together just wired up with uh, little bits of old copper wire and uh, one interesting thing to note on this is the joints between the pipes and the blow lamp which look like they're soldered they're not what that actually is is it is just araldited on pipes and then I have painted over the araldite with a bit of silver paint to make it look like solder and that's the whole thing assembled just from a slightly different angle you may notice the background has changed that's because I actually moved house in between doing these two things and um, that is, this is now building the bits for the webcam now this uh, you'll find out a bit more about this later didn't end up actually go end up on the PC now so this is a clock mechanism outer once I've stripped all the cogs out of it it is a piece of a heat sink from an old computer that's the copper pipe bits the uh, lens surround is a motor coil out of a stepper motor from a floppy disk drive and the outer part of that is a hood from an old camera and obviously a thermonetic valve hanging off the bottom and then I added some bits of a soldering sort of helping hands tool to uh, 
to just uh, make it look a bit more, a bit more steampunk. And then mounted it on a laboratory clamp stand. Again, this is not part of the computer anymore. This is just how it was at the time. So then I decided I'd better do something about the monitors. So this is UPVC cladding edging strip which I have cut in a mitre box and then joined together to uh, make a surround and added more little bits of UPVC edging strip on the corners then added card over the top. Now interesting that this picture is on a workbench this is the first time I had a workbench all of the rest of it up to this point was entirely built without even so much as a workbench so don't believe anyone that says you have to have a workshop to build steampunk things. You really don't. I built most of this computer in a back-to-back -back terraced house and then in a one-bed flat. So if you want to build steampunk, do not let not having a workshop hold you back. And this is the monitor with the frame on. Obviously I haven't done the frame for the second screen yet and I haven't done the keyboard yet and this printer's still an ugly grey box and there's a lot of wiring under the desk that's visible that doesn't really look very nice. Uh, the next thing we did was we did something about the wiring so basically I just cable tied it all up to the bottom of the VESA mount stand so the big clamps that were underneath then I cut a piece of plywood and a piece of wood that just slotted over it to hide it all away. Then we set to work on the keyboard. Now this is an IBM keyboard I, this keyboard is not the classic Model M. It is not a mechanical keyboard, it's just quite a good quality rubber mat style keyboard. That's mainly because I don't actually, I found I didn't actually get on very well with the mechanical style keyboards, I found them too noisy. So, one thing you will notice is that this is a key short and some of the um, symbols are not quite in the right place. This is because the key set, the only key set I could find available on Etsy was for a US layout keyboard. Now obviously I'm using a UK layout keyboard that has one extra key. It also has um, some of the keys in slightly different positions which is why some of it doesn't fit very well. Now you'll see the solutions to, that I came up with to these problems in a bit. So this is me starting, I clipped all the skirts off the keys with wire cutters. This is an extremely tedious process. I would never want to make another keyboard like this again. It was awful to do. And uh, I now see why steampunk keyboards that are for sale online cost so much. And this is it all put together. Now you can see I've replaced the missing key with a little watch mechanism that's approximately the same size as the keys. Now the keys are a laser cut wood product with a printed surface so I gave these keys a coat of um, very 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 many coats of um, polyurethane varnish which uh, should give a very hard wearing key surface. I mean, it has done so far and we are now three to four years down the line of this being used every day. The wood effect part is a piece of teak veneer which I cut to fit the keyboard and the little grills over the the status lights are from a, um, they're actually off an old pair of shoes, they're like little, little side vents that they sometimes put in old shoes. So after the shoes started to fall apart I pulled the little brass grills out of them and used them for this. And then I just wrapped some tapestry wool around the thread to make it, around the uh, cable to make it look like a cloth covered cable. So then I added some lights. The lights on this were are um, 12 volt uh, amber strip LEDs. I added lights into the top of the little top cabinet. I also added some green 12 volt LEDs into the bottom of that test tube which uh, then diffuses through a hot glue gun glue stick to just give a nice liquid level inside and then the I also added them to the vacuum tubes. Now this is a photo of the PC taken in 2017 just before I gave a talk about it at the 2017 asylum. So at this point it was sort of finished in that I was using it every day, it was working. Now the next picture 
this a few shots like this of the computer as it looked then but then there were these issues in 2017 the printer wasn't finished the second screen was failing um, it had developed some sort of issue where the um, essentially the graphics were displaying were missing one of the colors it wasn't the cable because I tested the cable on the other screen it was actually the screen itself the webcam had become temperamental it had to be unplugged otherwise when you booted the computer up it would just keep saying it wasn't recognized the clock that was under the desk didn't keep very good time despite just being a standard quartz mechanism it, it lost about two minutes a day and the desk was um, is very much out of period it's a mid-century modern desk and the PC itself at this point so this isn't the PC that was in it now it was no longer accepting Windows updates it kept coming up with various issues so before I moved any further these things had to be addressed so I started work on the printer so the printer it, because printers have a habit of failing I decided I wanted this to just sit inside a box so the box was built out of artists foam board and uh, the little box on the top is a 124th scale uh, doll's house room box then the artist foam board enclosure was wrapped over the edge with card and then the rivets were done as I said earlier with uh, pearlescent embellishments so these are I think they're 10 mil embellishments from the works they're very, very readily available they're packs of 70 for a pound they are well worth having in your steampunk arsenal people also use them a lot on um, large sort of uh, EVA foam cosplay builds um, again to look like rivets and then of course I had to add something over the uh, outfeed tray so the label of course is just dymo tape but once it's all painted over it just becomes a little steel embossed label the badge on the front, Imperial of course are a manufacturer of typewriters, this is off a, um, a Imperial car, it's a car badge. Now you see this photo here, you can see that the second screen has gone because it completely failed. The uh, little box underneath the monitor which I probably haven't talked about is the uh, sort of handles all the wiring for the lighting system so the switches underneath actually enable me to turn the lights off the uh, so that's the printer enclosure done speakers I didn't really talk about very much they are standard they are hi-fi speakers they're run off that little class T amp that you can see underneath the monitor which uh, class T amps just search for class T amplifier on eBay they're about 20 quid to 20 to 30 quid if they if you ship with the power supply personally I would advise buying one without a power supply then buying your own power supply because the ones they ship with tend to be not British standard compliant the speakers are hi-fi speakers which I bought from a pawnbroker little JVC speakers which I ripped the JVC badges off and put some little crests from some jewelry embellishments onto them and the horns on the top are two brass vases cut in half and reassembled with a 90 degree copper elbow so this is the um, bits bits for the top of the printer so that's the 24th scale room box covered with cardboard to uh, give some strapping around the edges and then I was adding some cogs so these cogs are out of a broken food mixer they're just plastic cogs basically and then we start work on the inside of the printer so what you can see in there is the it is the carriage the laser carriage from a DVD burner then fitted with that's rotated obviously through 90 degrees fitted with a typewriter golf ball from an old golf ball electric typewriter and then fitted with an ink feed system um, framework built up from Meccano and then um, all the rollers in there the roller at the front is at the rubber black rubber roller is out of a fax machine the other rollers are made from um, parts of a draw unit like um, a suspension file system from a draw office draw unit and then wrapped round with cork tape to make cork rollers so you can buy cork tape off eBay 
then all the little fittings inside are all just cardboard and that's just some more bits fitted inside and the inside all painted white then I added ink staining so the ink staining was just literally done with acrylic paint it was um, some mixture of washes and then flicked from a brush to create the splatter up the inside if you ever look inside an inkjet printer they do look like this inside especially if you've been using them for a good few years so then we fitted something on the back so this is to carry what will look like a drum of paper so you can see that off to the right of this uh, picture there's the drum that I've made and this is the support for the drum and again we're adding rivets with pearlescent embellishments and painting with primer outside my flat and then top coating and then that's it positioned on top of the printer the scale on the front is the metal insert out of a slide rule opened out it just gives a nice sort of scale that uh, looks like it could be for determining the position of the ink carriage inside that's just another photo from this different angle and that's it with the carriage in and a bunch of wiring fitted and the cogs are fitted on the side you can just see them on the left then these were the ink tubes for the uh, for the ink the, the uh, four colours of ink so these are just um, biro pen barrels very cheap biros the uh, plastic barrels uh, stopped at one end with some glue and then uh, filled with acrylic paint and left to dry they do take absolutely ages to dry when you've got that much acrylic paint on mass and that's them fitted into place and I think it does look sort of rather effective as a uh, ink delivery system for a printer and then that's just a shot from the front now the little pressure gauge fitted just again with 15 mil copper pipe and that's a shot of the whole thing and uh, some of my previous flat so then we so we're now at September 2018 the new major issue was that I was about to move house um, the printer was done second screen had been got rid of still hadn't found a suitable desk PC had actually been rebuilt internally at this point the webcams issue still hadn't been solved so we moved house and then I found a new desk so this desk was uh, uh, was is a 1950s I believe oak desk now although it's 1950s it's a similar style to was used for virtually any period in the last hundred years in sort of offices and industrial environments so there were new issues the monitors were VESA clamp mounts as I've already said which did not fit onto the new desk because the new desk has curved edges there was nowhere to put the external hard disks as they were previously sat in the drawer of the desk and were wired through into the drawer the, I decided the lighting distribution panel which was in the little box under the monitor didn't fit anywhere because the VESA mount had gone and in my opinion it didn't have enough LED lights in it I also wanted to add some moving bits so we started off trying to resolve two issues so this is to resolve both the monitor stand issue and also the hard disk drive issue so I built a wooden box now you can see at this point this is in my house that I moved to at this point this is down in the garage uh, I had a lot more space down there to work on this kind of thing so this is just a wooden built box built out of four millimeter MDF and uh, approximately inch square timber and then I just removed the clamp and screwed the VESA mount pole into it and then built the rest of the box up around it I managed to break my hole saw drilling holes in MDF and I had to buy new ones which did delay the project a little bit that's what can happen with hole saws especially very cheap ones again card edging rivets from pearlescent embellishments grey primer green top coat and then I set to work putting a little panel for the front so the panel is a piece of pine stained with dark oak stain 
then I added this big old amp meter that I had picked up from a second hand stall and I had also added some um, knife switches. Now these knife switches are not proper knife switches, they are brass fondue forks fitted into um, the bus bar from an old Wilex consumer unit which I found in a skip. So I decided that they looked quite a lot like knife switches when put together and that's what I fitted to the front of this box. Then we fitted, I fitted some more brass bits and some copper pipe bits to the side. Now that uh, brass bit on the right, which will be at the bottom, is a bulgin connector, military bulgin connector, which I removed the bulgin plug from and fitted a USB 3 port inside of so that I can use it for memory sticks. Then on the other side, I added some more just general little brass bits and a little clock mechanism that I had. Added the brass blowtorch to the top of the VESA mount and started building up with copper pipe. Now would you believe there's actually around about three meters of copper pipe went into this to build this thing up. There was a lot of copper in this and that was that fitted into place. So this now has a stand for the monitor and which also lifts it up and gives somewhere to put the external hard disk. There were still a few more issues, the main one being I wanted to add more lights. So the first thing I did was I looked at the little cupboard on the top. So this had been a part of the computer right from the beginning. And I decided that I didn't like the feet on it. So some pretty drastic surgery took place with a wood saw. But uh, I think you'll agree that after that, which you'll see in a minute, it looks a lot better. I also decided while I've got that down in the garage and open, I would take the opportunity to add some more bits of clock into it, add some more brass gearing, and also to change out the perspex that was in the door for an old brass, brass framed clock door with beveled glass that I'd picked up from a car boot sale. So that was the improved look of the front of it, still downstairs in the garage and this is now wiring up more bit that into the lighting properly. So inside that top box is an absolute rat's nest of cables. I still need to get around to sorting that out and putting a proper distribution block in there instead of just some 15 amp terminal block. So this is the cupboard now you can see on top of the computer without the legs I think it looks a lot better and I've also, you can see some lights now shining out the sides of the stand underneath. And that's just the side of that with its lights in. So now we started looking at adding movement. So this is a model steam engine that I picked up from the car boot sale, a three cylinder model steam engine. And then I ha all I've done is on the back of the flywheel, I have glued into place a nylon gear nylon gearing that I had I recovered from a dead fax machine and that nylon gearing happened to be the same tooth spacing as this system which is the eject motor from a an old VCR so you can see the motor drives a worm gear nice and slow onto that big uh, big toothed wheel and the they mesh perfectly so that I built a frame for that and we'll see that in a minute. Now we're looking at more lighting. So this is the gauge I fitted onto the decided to fit onto the side panel and I'm putting some LED strip into the inside of that drilled through the back of the gauge and through the back through the inside of the computer. Now just to add a point here the lighting on this runs entirely separately from the computer it's wired to its own wall wall power supply. It does not run off the PC's power supply. That was mainly done for purposes of me being slightly concerned about running things off the PC's power supply if they were to generate any funny surges or anything, especially with the motors now running off it. So that's the side panel with the additional parts, and that's the side panel fitted back onto the computer case. 
So the two little gauges at the front were, had to have incandescent bulbs, and that's basically because there's nowhere inside to hide LEDs. You would have, the, whatever bulbs I used would be visible. So I used some miniature incandescent uh, doll's house lights. Now they're designed to run off 12 volts, and I decided to undervolt them so they were less so they weren't as bright and run them on nine. So that's the uh, bulb fitted into the inside of the gauge and the wire run out the bottom. And then I put a little book converter inside this little brass component hidden away and put that onto the side of the top box. I then put some LED strip into the top of this old galvanometer, again to give it a bit of uh, illumination. And that's a test run off my bench power supply to just check that all the lights were illuminating as they should. And there we are fitted back into place. And I also gave the same LED strip treatment to the big brass amp meter on the front of the top box because I decided that needed some lights in it as well. And that is all assembled and this is pretty much as it looks right now. So this is, that's the little, uh, where the little steam engine ended up. Now it's actually controlled from the gate valve and if I just press play on this video you can see what happens. So all that is, is a momentary push to make switch inside the gate valve and as the valve closes it pushes on the switch. There is no need if you're using low voltage to put rotary switches inside gate valves. This approach works very well and is very easy to do without, act, without any modification to the valve itself. And that's the end. That is what it looks like today. Um, thank you all very much for taking the time to uh, listen to me ramble about my PC. Any questions, just put them down in the comments down here. And um, if, uh, if you like this, uh, consider subscribing to my channel and uh, turning notifications on. I don't upload videos very often, but when I do, it is generally steampunk content. Thank you very much, and uh, I will see you all later.